Okay, we're going to calculate the integral from 0 to 1 of ln x dx. And in fact, we will do this with two ways. I will demonstrate the first way, and this is usually what the textbooks will show you. And for the second way, we will have a special guest all the way from Singapore. His name is Unhan, and he will demonstrate the second way for us on that, okay? And be sure you subscribe to his channel as well. Anyway, first of all, we have to notice that this is in fact an improper integral. Because if you look at the graph of ln x, when x is approaching to 0 plus, the function goes straight down, right? And when x is equal to 1, we have ln 1 and not 0. So the graph of that looks like this. And this integral goes from 0 to 1, and we are just talking about this region. And the main question is, do we have a finite area for this region, right? But anyway, this is how we do deal with of uh, improper integral. Two things, know our integrations and believe in our limits. That's all, believe in our limits. We are going to integrate ln x first. And to do so, in fact, we have to use integration by parts. So I'll just do this real quick, okay? So I will, of course, use the di setup. I have to pick something to differentiate and something else to integrate. And don't forget the plus minus on the side. Do I want to integrate ln x? No, because that's the original question, right? So let me actually differentiate ln x. So what should we integrate though? You can look at this as 1 times ln x, so I can just integrate 1. And now let's proceed. Integrating 1 in the x world is just x. Differentiating ln x is just 1 over x, right? And if you notice the product of this row, 1 over x times x is just 1, right? So we can integrate that, so we can stop. But anyway, we'll proceed. Remember, the product of each diagonal, along with a sign right here in the front, is the first part of the answer. So I will just do this times that. Namely, x times ln x, okay? And then the product of each row, along with the sign in front, it's still an integral. Because this is minus, so we will subtract the integral of this, 1 over x times that, x. Of course, we close this with the dx. And don't forget, this integral was going from 0 to 1, but this is the first part of the answer already. Right here, we have to evaluate this part from 0 to 1. However, for this, this is still the integral that goes from 0 to 1, okay? And now, let's take a look at this part first. When I plug in 1 into here, I will get 1 times ln 1. And thanks to ln 1, this is just 0, so the whole thing is 0, so that's good. But the moment I plug in 0 into here, I will have 0 times ln 0, like this, for the second part, right? Well, ln 0, first of all, right here, because ln is only defined in the positive sense, right? I can only have positive x, I cannot have negative x. This right here, it's really 0 plus, and I shall also have 0 plus as well. And ln 0 plus, it's negative infinity, and negative infinity times 0, guess what? We have to do more work, because that's in determinate form. So this right here, we have to do the Lapidus rule, in fact. But anyway, let me just finish this part as well. This is minus the integral from 0 to 1. 1 over x times x is just 1, and then we have the dx, of course. But now, let's take care of this part. And be sure you have to supply this work when you are you know, doing this as well. You really have to supply the limit as x goes to 0 plus, okay? Because once again, the input for ln has to be positive values, but the output can be negative. Anyway, so I will take the limit as x goes to 0 plus, and the expression is x times ln x, so let's just do this part in blue. Well, this is a 0 times negative infinity situation, right? So what we can do is look at this x and bring this down, down. So what I mean by that is the following. I can look at this as the limit. As x goes to 0 plus, I will keep the ln x on the top over. 
I will bring the x down down. It becomes 1 over x down in this denominator. If you take this and flip back, you will get back to the original. Okay, so that's pretty much the deal. And yes, I know sometimes I put a parenthesis around the ln x, sometimes I didn't. It's okay. Hopefully, uh, it's not that big of the deal. And the reason that it's okay, because I only have the x as the input for ln. That's okay. But anyway, I will still have the parentheses. All right, now, if I plug in 0 plus into here, I will end up with negative infinity on the top. And when I plug in 0 plus into here, 1 over 0 plus is positive infinity. The sign doesn't matter, but the form, infinity over infinity, this allows us to use L'Hopital's rule, right? So I can legitimately now differentiate the top and then differentiate the bottom. And we still take the limit as x goes to 0 plus. On the top now, the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Differentiating 1 over x on the bottom, we get negative 1 over x squared. And this is a complex fraction, do whatever you would like. I would like to just multiply the top and bottom by x squared because that's the lowest common denominator of this and that. So you'll see this is just the limit as x goes to 0 plus. This and that, well, we have just x, right? And then this and that, well, we multiply the cancel out, but it's negative, so I'll just say negative x. You get 0, because when you plug in this, negative 0 plus is just 0. So, all this part is equal to 0. And this part is also 0 because of the ln 1. <laughs> so that's kind of good. And now, I just have to worry about this part, right? Okay, so this right here, we have just this, negative, zero, negative integral from 0 to 1 of 1 dx, which is just negative. Integrating 1 in the x world is x, and I have to plug in from 0 to 1, like this, right? So I do it like this. Keep the negative on the outside, plug in 1, and then subtract, plug in 0, and you end up with negative 1 for the final answer. Like that. So the integral from 0 to 1 of ln x dx is equal to negative 1. It's kind of good because we saw the integration by parts with the di setup, and we also did L'Hopital's rule like this, and in the end we get negative 1 for the answer. However, there is an easier way, and let's welcome Unhan for the second method. It's me, Unhan again, and I'm going to be Blackman Rabban's guest speaker today, and I'm going to be showing the second way of finding the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of x with respect to x. The second method of finding this integral. To find this integral, I'm going to be using a different method which relies on inverses. So, so first, we have graph of the natural log of x is something like this. And this goes down all the way to negative infinity. And this goes up to infinity. But I won't be care but in this case I don't care about that. And we're trying to find this area which is from 0 to 1. To find this area, again I said we are using inverses, and what is the inverse? It's e to the x, isn't it? But how do we get that? First, we actually need to flip it along y is equals to x. And, in fact, this actually changes the area. But how? It actually becomes negative. It actually negates the, the area. The inverse is, or as you know, is e to the x, isn't it? <laughs> Alright, and now you're trying to find it again. Since you flip this over, previously it was something like this, right? Previously it was like this. But now since that we flipped it, the area is actually over here. This is actually 0 and 1 on the y-axis, since you flipped it along y equals to x. 
And again, this is equal to magnitude infinity. So this one actually also occurs magnitude infinity. And so now all we have to do is to find this integral using this information. So this integral, the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of x with respect to x is equal to the integral, which is actually equals to the negative because, because it's according to our, because it's flipped along y equals to x. It equals to the negative of the integral from negative infinity to 0 of the inverse, which is e to the x respect to x. Well, this is easy. This, all we have to do now is just evaluate the integral to the x and do it along the, the limits of integration and then just, and then after that, just evaluate it according to the limits of integration and therefore, you get your answer as negative 1. For watching Black Pen Red Pen's video, please subscribe to me, Black Pen Red Pen, and me, me, meow. Me, me, meow. I want to be a cat. So, goodbye, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.